Hello everyone, welcome to the new session. Uh, in this session, we will cover authentication. Uh, usually, whenever we are working with access control, access control has two basic parts. The first one is authentication. And then once you authenticate someone, the next step is to authorize them to access restricted resources. So we'll cover this in two different sessions. So in this current session, we'll talk about authentication. The next session, we'll talk about authorization. The first question is, what is authentication? Authentication is the process of verifying who a user is. A user may say some that he or she is someone, and this is, you need to verify whether whatever they are saying is correct or wrong. And how is this done? Typically, you challenge the user, and this is this challenges could be username and password, or answering a security question, biometric security, fingerprint, fa facial recognition, and so on. Uh, but in this course, and in, in Buy From Me, we are going to challenge the user by asking them to provide an acceptable username and password. Uh, how, is authentication, how does authentication look like? Let's suppose we have a restricted resource, and in this restricted resource, we have someone guarding this restricted resource. You as a user would like to access the restricted area, and then to do that, you have to show the, the guard whether you are authorized to use this. So you authenticate yourself by providing an ID. Before they let you into the restricted zone, you have to provide an ID, telling them who you are is really who you are, right? So you have to prove, so have to show a proof that confirms who you are. In our scenario, the server would be present, present the user with a challenge to a login form, which has area for the username and password, and the user would in return provide the username and password. Once the server receives the username and password combination, it will connect with the database, run a query to ask the database whether this combination of username and password exists in the database. If the user says exists, then you confirm to the user if the database confirms that there exists a, uh, a pair of the username and password, then you confirm back to the user saying that this exists. If it doesn't, then you say, okay, sorry, you are not authorized to log in. Okay, so or you are not authenticated. So this is what we have to do in this part of the course. Uh, so we'll start with the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the course page and we need to download the authentication zip file. This file contains all the necessary code that we can start working with to check whether the user is authenticated or not. Once you download this authentication zip file, once you unzip it, you will find five files inside them. You just need to copy these five files and paste them inside your buy from me folder. There is a duplicate file which is the uh, footer.php. So you have to, the, the system will ask you to overwrite the file. You can say yes, because we have slightly modified the footer file to include the links for the login and logout page. Okay, so once you go back, once you, once you do this, Part, when you open the IDE, you can see the login and logout page added. So in my case over here, I have the login page added over here. So and once we open the code, once we open this page, the footer will have the login uh, link over here. And once you press the login link, it will take you to the login page. Now once you are there in the login page, the user will be asked to enter the challenge, which is in our case, the username and password. Once the username and password is entered correctly, the, the login button is pressed, and then the system will verify whether this pair, login ID and password, exists in the database. If this pair exists in the database, then the user will be allowed to, act, allowed to enter. If this pair doesn't exist, we say that, sorry, the username and password entered was incorrect. Okay, so how do we do that first? The first thing that we need to do is create an area in our database where we have a set of valid username and passwords. To do that, we open PHP MyAdmin and then we create a new table called user and we keep the number of columns to four. In this table, we have four columns. So we will just make our initial settings such as the UID, which will be my, sorry, UID. Uh, which will be my username and then we have the password and then I would enter the uh, you know, 
an access token. We will use that in authorization. Okay. And then we have one more, which would be the role admin or something which I don't have right now so I'm gonna delete this one I don't I don't need the fourth column okay so I'm just going to have the role here for now and I will delete this later on because I don't need that right now so I have a UID which will be varcare sorry varcare let's say I'm going to put them 200 uh, the better for password to make it 255 because we are going to see how we mask the password inside the database and then for the access token, again, I will also do varcar, make it 200. And the role, uh, I'll keep it as a teacher because I'm going to delete this in a little while, right? And then we have the index, which is the primary key, will be my user ID. Okay, and that's it. That's all, that's all I have to set right now. Okay, and then I save it. We can go back to our database and just simply say drop to the role because I don't need it. Because when you create it, you can just say three columns, okay, instead of four columns. So you have user ID, password, and access token. Now, what I want to do right now is I want to go to my database. I'm going to insert an item. So I'll put admin and the password as admin, okay? And I save this. I say go. You can see that whenever I browse a system, I can see the username and password. See, the, the password is here. So the administrator of a system can actually know what is your password, which is not good practice. The most important part is you need to hide this password even from everyone. So you, what you do is you use something called as hashing. We are using a type of hashing which is currently not very secure, but this is for learning purposes only. But if you are building a professional system, you have to look for other forms of hashing. So for us now, what I want to do now is if I do edit, there is a drop down. See, there's a function in, in PHP My Admin. So when you go to the drop down, just click before the password, just click on the drop down and select MD5. MD5 is a hashing algorithm which will convert this plain text into a hash code. So when, the, you, when you see it in the database, you will not know what it is. Okay, so I say go. And if I go now again to my, you know, to my the table, you can see that in, in the password field, I have this hidden hash code. Now the, the beauty of hashing is, once you hash a given string, you cannot get back the original string. So even if you forget your password, the only way to uh, you know, get the password back is to reset it. This is a very good practice because we don't want to have the password stored inside the database as plain text. So always you have to mask it. So here we are masking it, okay? So the only way you can verify it is that when the user enters the password, you again can change it into MD5 and then you compare the MD5 values. So the MD5 values will be should be the same, okay? And then I have the admin over here, which is my user ID, okay? So let's keep this as it is and we will go back to our code. So we'll, we'll take our code here and we will try to modify our code such that when the user submits the form, we validate whether the username and password entered are correct or wrong. So let's do this. We have already done this multiple times. So let's say the name of the, the act in this action, we have login. And whenever you are sending sensitive information, you remember that we have to use the post method. And then the name of the button over here is login. So we go to the top of the page over here and we have to write an if statement. If is set dollar underscore post, that is when the when the button login was pressed. So when the login button was pressed, I want to do something, right? I want to get the username and password and I want to run a query in the database. So let's do that. So first of all, I have to get the user ID and password that the user entered. So I'll say $UID is equals to dollar underscore post of UID. And then I will say password equal to dollar underscore, sorry, underscore post and password, which is also PWD. 
Once I have received the username and password, you remember I told you that the password, whatever you receive, should be converted into MD5. Otherwise, you cannot compare the plain text password because the user will enter, you know, the plain text. But it's our job to convert it into MD5 before comparison. Because if you don't convert it, the user will not. So there is a function in PHP that allows us to convert the password from plain text to MD5. And the name of the function itself is MD5. So we are going to use this function to convert the user entered password into MD5. So we can compare the MD5 values from the database and from here. Okay. Now the next step is simple. We have to run the query. But to run the query, if you remember, we have to first include our database, which is in db-config, config.php. Once we do that, then we can create the query, which is, in our case, select star from user, because we have, we have created a table called user, where, and we provide the username and password. Select star from user, where, username, which is UID, is equal to dollar $UID. Now, if you remember, this is a string, this is a var char. So I have to put them inside single quotations. And password is equal to dollar $PWD. Again, we have to include that inside single quotations. So this is my query. Select star from user, where the UID user ID is user ID which is inside the database. If you go to the database, this is my UID and the password should be equal to this password and we have already converted that password into MD5. Once the query is created, the next job is to run the query. Result is uh, mysql i underscore query. We have dollar con dollar query. The result we get back is a row. Either we get a row or we don't get a row. If there is no username and password exist, we don't get a row. But if we get a row, that means you will get some value. Uh, get a row value. Okay. So how do we do it? We cannot use fetch as sort because fetch as sort assumes that you receive a row. But suppose you don't receive a row. Suppose the username and password entered is incorrect. So this is not a right way to check whether there is a row or is not. There is no row. But there is a function in PHP which allows us uh, to, to get the number of rows entered. So we can add if there is a function which said mysql i underscore uh, num underscore rows. Okay, a dollar result. So what happens is this, this function will actually give me the number of rows. And if the number of rows is greater than equal to one. It should it should be equal to one at, actually. Uh, it, if it's more than one, then it's also there is a problem, right? Because user ID is a unique key, uh, so we cannot have a uh, cannot have more than one user IDs with the same user ID. But for you know for our sake now, so if it is less than that, that means there is a problem. If it is greater or equal to one, we can say e double equal to one as well. If you like, you can just simply say double equal to one, which is also okay, which is the right one. So if the number of rows is equal to one, that means, yes, we found a combination in the database where the username is this username and password is this password. So in this case, we should say, yeah, you have successfully logged in. So in our case, we don't want to say successfully logged in. Usually whenever you say, whenever you log into your email, it takes you to the inbox, right? So we want to go to a page which allows the administrator to make changes. So in this case, we copied a file like if you go to the file you can see that we just copied a file and the name of the file was uh, CP admin this file so we have we want to go to this file now if you remember the the function that we used earlier for going to a PHP page we use the function called header header location CP underscore admin dot PHP and then we say exit now if you also remember the issue that we had earlier when we were trying to use the header function is that whenever we use the header function, we had to do something at the top of the page, right? And that was to call a function called ob underscore start, which will, you know, restrict the headers that are sent to the page. And then we can say else, if there was a problem, that means something was wrong, 
right so we can just say over here click write dollar error is equals to one and what do we do if dollar error is one we can go back to the bottom of our form and write something here you know a p tag with an error message so we'll like this php if is set dollar error and okay and we can say that and uh, and dollar error is equal to one that means if the value of dollar error is equal to one then what do we do we show them a message let's say p uh, incorrect username or password please try again okay it could be any message you like also you can make it color red and you no know, look like an error message PHP and I'm going to close the bracket I'm going to save this message and let's go back and test our code so what we did was we received the username and password here first and then we checked uh, we converted the user the password into md5 and then we run the query to the database checking if the username and password are correct or wrong and then we receive the query and we remember that in the select query we receive a row and this row we use the mysqlite numrows function to check whether we receive a row or not if the username and password is not correct we do not receive any row the number of rows is zero if we receive something then we go to the cp admin page else we go to the we just set the error flag and we go down and based on the value of the error flag we show an error message okay so this is what we have so i'm going to save this page and let's go back to our code refresh this page and we are going to try to enter admin admin which was what we entered earlier okay and then I'm going to press the login.